Hello and welcome to the all new Aston Martin DB11 but more importantly today is a really big day certainly for me because I'm heading down to Le Mans for the 24 hour race it's my first time that I've ever been there I've been meaning to go there for years and years and years and every year something comes up but this year I've been invited down by Hackett and Aston Martin which actually brings me on to why I'm in uh, London to start the day I'm heading to the Hackett store first because they've uh, very kindly offered to deck me out in some Aston Martin Hackett attire. So uh, yeah, heading over to Sloan Street first, dipping in their store, and they've said you can literally take your pick of uh, whatever items you want, and then we're gonna meet up with some other Aston Martin owners and trek it on down to Le Mans. Let's hit it. As long as I've got a good road. If it's, I mean, I've pulled out of my house and I've got one country road. So if I've got enough time on that road, which I know, there's no one there, isn't there? Well, given the amount of different cars that I've driven on that road. So I know every car feels I'll do this downstairs. So I jumped in that thing straight away. I was like, this is a promising platform. Good. I mean, it's it's great now because they've. This is the first car that they've got the AMG built uh, engine in, so gearbox is actually good now. Yeah, a medium? Yeah, a very small. <laughs> What's wrong yeah. with people? Yeah. 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 Apart from that yeah. night, yeah. I just like night red, yeah. yeah. I thought about the Boris bike, but then I thought, not enough. Aha! How cool is this? Look! Aston Martin t-shirt, Aston Martin jacket, I really like. I'm not sure if we can see it here. These little perforations in the leather saying Aston Martin. It's amazing. Also, the super cool thing is, I just got to meet Jeremy Hackett himself, who actually dressed me. As the name would suggest, uh, Jeremy founded Hackett. I think it was back in 1983. Fascinating guy. Uh, also, we've been joined by three other Aston Martin owners. We've got two new Vanquish. Uh, one is Coupe, one is a Volante, and the owner of Norton Motorbikes has joined us in possibly my favorite Aston Martin, which is the DBS. It is a flappy paddle gearbox. My, my absolute dream spec DBS would be a manual, but nevertheless, something about the styling of that car is absolutely timeless. So uh, yeah, really good start. Anyway, we've all got kitted out. They've opened the store for us super early, which means we've uh, been able to get access before anyone else could get in, have a wander around the store as well. It's beautiful. It's now time to uh, jump back in our cars and make our way to the Channel Tunnel to ultimately end up in Le Mans. How cool is this? On the road to Le Mans with four Aston Martins, including this beautiful new DB11 which uh, always comes on with the radio on loud, which is quite frustrating. And I could have just decked me out in this awesome gear. So uh, yeah, good way to start Friday. Okay, now I very rarely start the beginning of a video with a complaint, but the freedom of movement in London is getting ridiculously bad. I mean, we've gone nine miles since Sloan Street and it's taken us an hour. <laughs> so I don't know, make of that what you will. On top of that, it's also highlighted something which I'm finding a bit of an annoying issue. Uh, with the DB11 and that's the calibration of the servo on the brakes at low speeds the, the biting point is so sharp it's like the top end of the brake travel 
it's very slight and then all of a sudden it just bites and you're finding traffic you're sort of really having to modulate it super finely which for a Grand Tourer I'm quite surprised at yeah annoying start I just want to get out now on the open road the brakes aren't the end of the world this traffic is it's really doing my head in I mean we've got this wonderful twin turbocharged V12 engine and we've been creeping along honestly our average speed's been like 15 miles an hour it's been crawling it's ridiculous Finally out of London at the Channel Tunnel. We're just waiting to board, but this is the opportunity where we finally got all four cars lined up. So let me show you around as to what is what. First up, I know this is the oldest car in our group, but the DBS, I think, is still my favorite Aston Martin. It's just something about it. The aesthetics are timeless. As I mentioned earlier, we have the owner of Norton Motorbikes with us, hence plate. Um, and also, these are also one of my favorite sounding too. I'm driving the DB11. It's a great car, but because they've gone all turbocharged on it now, that signature naturally aspirated sound from the Aston Martin V12 isn't quite there. However, they have done quite an amazing job of making a turbocharged engine sound great. In contrast, and ironically, I've just spent a week with the latest uh, Aston Martin Vanquish S Volante, which means the roof comes off. Um, that thing sounds unreal. The irony of all of this is the video that I filmed with that has been embargoed until the end of the month, I think. Um, so yeah, as it happens, my DB11 video that you're watching right now uh, yeah, has probably has probably dropped before my vanquish. The weather forecast for our trip down there is supposed to be really good, and I reckon if I was going to pick one car for this trip, it would still be the Volante. Okay, so ah, oh, this is horrible. This is horrible. Whoever booked the ticket didn't book us into the wide carriage, and this isn't <laughs> the smallest of cars. Ah, oh, man. It's so tight. If you check out this, if you look at the screen here, you can see a top-down view of the car. <laughs> this is exactly where the wheels lie. It is so, so tight. God, this feels horrible. I feel sorry for the guys behind us, actually, because this is a press car. <laughs> I don't own this one. They do. Okay, I think we've made it scratch-free. We're good, we're good. Good morning, Andrew. How can you tell me that's happened? Thank you. Yes. France, finally. Thank you. On the open road, on the open door. <laughs> Good to go. in this car now and I think it's about time that we start to talk about what it's all about. So the most significant thing about it is that it's the first time Aston Martin has turbocharged a series production car. This is actually replacing the DB9 and you could tell straight away two things. Massive amounts of torque. Uh, it's 500 and I think it's 516 pounds feet of torque. 600 brake horsepower from the twin turbocharged V12 engine. And we also have an all new uh, eight speed gearbox too, which 
really lends itself well to it being a sort of ultimate grand tourer. Now, despite the fact that it's a twin turbocharged engine, this is one of the best sounding turbocharged engines that I've heard in a long time. Obviously, I guess for Aston Martin, one of its most important signature attributes is the way it sounds. Uh, and I was actually quite nervous that this would sound a bit dull because that's kind of inherently what happens when you end up sticking a forced induction on a car. But this, I don't know how they've done it, but they've managed to maintain that really lovely signature iconic barble uh, that you used to get from the Deal School DB9. To drive, it really isn't trying to be anything else other than a Grand Tourer. Earlier on back there, I had some nice sweeping bends. It's a very lovely weighted, well-balanced car, but you can still tell that it has that sort of softer uh, edge to it. However, while pressing the uh, Sport button here, it goes from GT to Sport to Sport Plus. So I think gear shifts are a bit faster, throttle mapping feels a bit more responsive and of course it sounds cool too check it out I mean that doesn't sound turbocharged that sounds really good so earlier on I was complaining that the brakes certainly when going slower around town were a bit biting and I still maintain that but when you're out on the road like this which let's face it that's what this car is really all about it's lovely the brakes are just right actually you can just trim off enough speed with very little effort Surprisingly, and again, I don't know if it's specific to this actual car I'm in now, but there's quite a lot of wind noise. So I'm cruising down at legal speeds, so I'm not doing anything mad. And coming from my door seal, or perhaps around the wing mirror, there is some wind noise, which I didn't expect from a Grand Tour like this. Don't hold me to it across the range, um, but I'm only going off my experience right now, and that's actually quite bad. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, I'll try opening and closing the door later and playing with the uh, seals, perhaps something to make them folded, but yeah, it's good. Gearbox, if you watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I'm a bit of a gearbox snob. I either like a manual or a twin clutch. This isn't either, this is a more conventional auto box. However, if you watch this, it does downshift with, I mean, it's fast, right? It's pretty quick. Now, it's not that the actual shift times themselves aren't fast, it's the relationship between the transmission and the engine. It's, it doesn't sort of rapidly spool up that engine upon downshifts. The actual initiation of the change is there, but when you downchange, it's more of a, a gradual spooling. Did you hear that? It doesn't actually go bang, bang. But again, more of a chilled out, casual Grand Tour. It's not here to set lap records and for what we're doing right now crunching miles on the way to Le Mans I can think of very few other cars that would do the job this well fifth gear pulling like a mule massive torque it's a great thing We have made it, we are at Le Mans, we've got this fantastic, check out this villa, it's so, so cool. We've got a swimming pool, the fridge is stocked, it's going to be a hell of a weekend. We're here for the next two days for the 24 hour of Le Mans, we're here with Hackett, we're here with Aston Martin Racing, we've got some super cool access, and it's my very, very first time. So if you haven't been, I'm going to do my very best job of bringing you guys virtually along for the rides, as if you haven't been there, sharing it through my eyeballs to your eyeballs, and hopefully we're going to have a hell of a race weekend. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you next time. Ciao.